Hi, Roger. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's great uh, talking to you and it's great for you to, to make some time. I mean, I guess you've got some time, right? Like everybody right yeah. now. Well, I am isolated. I've, yeah. I've been taking this seriously for a couple of weeks now. So um, I see my message and uh, that's about it. Okay. And so what's the situation in New York? Are you actually like, uh, well, is the I, I, yeah. I speak to people in New York, obviously, and obviously I watch the figures a little bit. Um, equally, obviously, I never watch TV uh, because there's no point in watching TV in the United States because it's all absolute dribble and complete lies, all of it. There is no news. Let's see how this spike continues. Clearly, the United States of America is almost certainly, absolutely, without question, the least prepared country anywhere on the globe uh, to deal with the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, for obvious reasons. One, it has a completely incompetent government led by Donald Trump, who has dismantled all the apparatus that ordinary people might use in their lives, like education, for instance, and Betsy the fucking boss. I mean, give me a break. And all of that. Um, yeah, we have close ties with Shel Sheldon Adelson and Eric Prince. So we're good at uh, raising private armies and going and murdering people. We'll be very, very good at that. But if there's any, thank God for Anthony Fauci. Is that his name? The epidemiologist, epi whatever it is. Yeah, I can't say this word because either. He is, he, he's obviously an extremely highly educated, brilliant man. How he has stayed in a position of any power, nobody will ever know. Because as we know, Trump dismantled the whole office that was set up to, de to be there in case there was an outbreak and um, of any kind of a, any kind of a pandemic of any any viral he dismantled it a year two years ago Jim, uh, that's a waste of money get rid of it which he's done with everything environmental protection ah oh, fuck that let's put Pruitt in charge of it destroy it anybody in um, who works for big oil can come and help us look after the environment Pruitt you'll do come on then but I've been trying to kill everybody in environmental protection for the last 20 years. Perfect, perfect man for the job. I'm involved in a court case in Holland where, I, where, where I'm supporting, at least financially, the Ziada family who are suing Benny Grants for the murder of six members of their family in Gaza in 2014. So I'm giving them money to... to and, and we're just about to go into an appeal stage of that case, so it will be ongoing. Um, uh, um, uh, Ismail uh, Ziada who can only do this because he's married to a Dutch lady, and in consequence, he's a Dutch, has Dutch citizenship, so he can sue through the Dutch courts. The defence from Gantz is that they should be bringing this case in Israel. <laughs> Okay, excuse me for sniggering, because obviously you you can't possibly sue the ex, um, you know, leader of the IDF in Israel. It ain't gonna happen. Uh, why? So, um, so there's a Dutch film company who who decided to make a um, documentary about this case. Thank goodness, you know that's so cool. And they sent me some of their work, and so I went, oh, look at that, and it was. Um, a documentary about the murder of four Dutch journalists in El Salvador in 1983. Horrible, horrible. I remember the story from when I was quite, well, I was 40 years old in 1983, but I, I remember the story now. They were, they were, just, they were murdered by the uh, army in El Salvador with the support, though, of American troops. It's since come out. So watching that documentary, suddenly there was Reagan talking about shining city on the hill and spreading freedom and democracy to all these poor countries like El Salvador, who desperately needed their help to bring them out of chaos and communism into the light of freedom and democracy. 
There were death squads patrolling El Salvador for years, paid for by the Reagan administration, murdering people. They murdered 35,000 people in about a year. So, sorry, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. This is not actually um, a deviation from this general subject because the general subject about coronavirus or about anything else that concerns the lives and deaths of the people um, is one big story and it cannot be confined to this particular nasty pandemic which is going on. But what the pandemic does is it shines a light upon the situation that is extant when it's not going home. But the people in the United States, you know, um, it's a bit like living in a world people by the walking dead. And uh, that may sound extremely callous, particularly now that many of them are going to die. And actually, there are those on the right wing of American politics who are saying, no, 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 get back to work. We need the economy going. It's only 2.7% of the population that will die. You fucking old people, you know, fuck, fuck them. But who cares? Let's get on with business. They're saying that. Can you believe it? The government doesn't serve the people. Government serves the corporations and the plutocrats. And everybody knows it, but nobody will say anything. The other thing, since you've given me this airtime that interests me, is that all the good people out there, I saw Bill Gates had written a long thing recently about what to do. and uh, They never mention American foreign policy. They never mention the empire. Ever. None of them, not one of them says, of course, the reason that we're so fucked up is because we spend all our money killing brown people because for some reason we want to. So disgusting in every possible way. It's not to protect the freedom. It's not even to protect American freedom. Not that there is much in this country. There's a little bit veneered over the top. And it's certainly not to protect the possibility for anybody in the rest of the world to have any freedom or for democracy to thrive, which is the big lie. That is the big lie of the American empire. We need to kill everybody in order to impose freedom. It's right in front of our eyes, and it's like a comic, except it's not. It's a tragic graphic novel. What we're watching is... History in real time reduced to Hollywood nonsense. We're watching Rambo, and we believe it to be the truth. How interesting it is. Where, where is all the great medical help with the rest of the world coming from? It's coming from Cuba and Venezuela and China. They are the people who are stepping forward to try and help the rest of us deal with this terrible health crisis um, that, that we're looking at because we can't, because we don't have health services. I mean, there's a tiny bit left in the UK, but only tiny. You know, since Blair and Thatcher, they've been trying to dismantle and have largely succeeded in dismantling the National Health Service in, in the UK um, in the last 30 years. There's almost nothing left, and, and we're seeing the results of that in the terrible things that are happening in the UK. Can they keep telling the big lie and convince... At the moment, they are. Gallup came out with a poll yesterday that said 70% of people polled in America think Trump's doing a great job with the coronavirus team. <laughs> wow. I mean, talk about an efficient propaganda system that people can actually watch that, him lying getting everything wrong all the time, being totally, completely and utterly incompetent, showing himself to be the willful, stupid, ignorant, braggart pig that he is, and people still think he's great. Talk about reality TV gone crazy. My opinion, and again, uh, for what it's worth, um, I think once more it's going to depend on, on on the people to organize and, and fight back. You so know, right. the governments are going to just go into overdrive uh, and and try to sort of you know pin our heads down and say you need to work, the economy needs to, and we're going to have to you know, stand up. Yeah, right. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no worries. 
in my isolation here, and I've been here for like a couple of weeks, one of the things I did was I finally learned to sing um, El Derecho de Vivir en Paz, Victor Jara's great anthem to the poet Ho Chi Minh from 1971 or two or whenever it was. He was killed in 73, so it must have been very early 70s. Um, which uh, the people in uh, uh, Santiago in Chile have been singing in the streets. There's, if you go online, you can see a picture of like 200 or 300 people playing, all playing guitars and all singing Victor's song. So I thought, you know, I've re-recorded it with his first and last verse, and I've written three verses in, in the middle. And my verses are about how the, the, there's lines like, the sound of the casserolazo is louder than all of your guns. Um, and, and it's all about the fact that the power of those demonstrations that we're seeing in Ecuador, in Quito, you know, in, um, in Santiago, in Beirut, in, in, obviously they're suppressed. We, you have to go online to see any of this stuff. People have to take to the streets and I, and I believe that they will. They're going in Santiago. I spoke to my friend, friends in Santiago day before yesterday. And, um, they, I said, this is sort of stop, stop the demonstrations. And they said, yeah, but it's just a postponement. The revolution that is happening in, in Chile is only on hold as soon as this clears down. The problem is that the powers that be are trying to use the coronavirus. For instance, in the United States, the Department of Justice is trying to put pressure on the Congress to implement new laws to allow the detainment of journalists who report on any of these things, or me. You know, they're trying to enact laws so that I can be locked up forever. Luckily, there's pushback from the squad. So so it's Ilan Omar and Rashida Talib and OAS, AOC and, and, and Betty, what's her name, McCollum and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of good women in Congress who are going, no, no, you cannot lock up our journalists. You cannot silence us. We will not bow to your entirely errant authority. On a personal level, because you, it's not often that we are, we stop, right? You, you, your your life is is hectic. You you traveling all the time. You're recording. You're playing. It's not often that you just sit down and they tell you you stay home for like two three weeks or something. So I was wondering if this this time I guess pretty much alone and stuff. Do you reflect on your own self? I'm really interested that you should ask me that because what it means is to me is that. And it's very interesting to have a bit more time to reflect um, how beautiful this planet is, how incredibly beautiful it is when the sun comes up in the morning or you wake up in the morning and it's blowing a gale and you can hear the wind howling around the chimney or it doesn't matter what it is, just, you know, And, and so it forces one to think, why are they all fucking it up? Why can't we just enjoy it? What, what is it that makes psychopaths, sociopaths like Donald Trump and fucking Bolsonaro and Modi and all the rest of what makes them want to destroy the world? What, what is it that's missing? Where is the missing love in the, in the, in the, in the center of their beings that makes them do that rather than waking up in the morning going, Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Uh, and then going, wow, what shall I do today? What makes me feel good? Does it really make you feel good to destroy the world? To fuck people over, to steal and murder and maim? and destroy 
in my experience, when you get the opportunity, maybe, to get up in the morning and then you see somebody who needs help, you go and help them. You go and help them if you can. And if they let you, which they nearly always do, people who need help, that is what brings you joy. That is what illuminates your day. That is what makes life worth living. Having a fucking health service, Trump. Like, imagine if there was a health service now so that people wouldn't be dying in corridors with somebody deciding whether to... Who gets the ventilator? Well, we've only got one. There's 150 people. Oh, that's difficult. Why haven't you got 150, you prick? You're the richest country in the world. Why don't you have this shit? Why don't you have a health service? Well, because we wanted to make a profit out of insurance companies and pharmaceuticals. Mm. You're so dull and you're so maimed. And I hope you're fucking miserable. But when I wake up and see the sun, I want to feel joy in my life. And I want to feel the joy of looking after someone else's child as well as my own and looking after someone else's country as well as my own. That's what I want. I want to feel community. That is where joy lies.